Okay, uh, this is on another video um, on using the igniter circuit, uh, Tesla's igniter circuit, to run a pulse motor. Um, and someone asked some questions and would like to see a schematic. Um, if you look at the patent, you can look it up, uh, igniter for gas engines circuit. And <coughs> here we have, let me see if it's clear focus. This would be our reed switch. Just imagine a rotor out here. Um, this side of this transformer that's in Tesla's patent would be these coils over here, and I just have them in series. And here's our capacitor. And then here's our large inductor. There. And there's the little capacitor there. I have a 0.22 ohm at 250 volts and then here's our battery you can see that current doesn't flow through here because uh, the capacitor won't pass the DC voltage until this switch is latched and it uses this low ohm coil up here to short out across this capacitor and that provides a path for current to flow from the battery through this inductor it builds a field then when your switch opens, this field collapses and charges this capacitor up really high. Um, and then when the switch closes again, that high voltage is shorted across this short coil. At the same time, it's charging this to redo the cycle. Um, I'm going to hit this switch here. You can see it, it's fluctuating. You can see down here. But when you hold you see the current's flowing, but not through the cap. The current is rising. This is like a slow simulation. And then you release it. And you can see that the spark gap produces a spark. I did this on uh, Circuit Simulator 1.5. Uh, I just got the magnet on there, it helps for whatever reason it does. I'll just give it a little spoon. Now with this little cap in here, this .22, transformer has a little more noise going on. Um, not the transformer core, with just the inductor in it. Let's see. I'm trying to adjust this a little bit, it moved a little bit earlier. If I pull this cap out, you don't get it. She's still rotating. Um, it does slow down a bit. Let me take the cap out. Um, be quiet, kitty. I'm almost done. I put one of these large 22 microfarad caps in. Kitty. And she will start spinning faster. Actually, right now, it seems like it might be spinning slower. Make sure I got that in there right. You can hear when I took it out. Shush, kitty. Add some speed when I use that Orbo method with that along with driving the rotor with these may as well use it while it's there I'm not sure how the rotor is affecting what this does in the circuit take the passer out, a lot less noise she slows down a little bit so the capacitor charging does have a, an effect um, I'm finding that there's I'm going to have to really find a way to adjust either the capacitor or this coil in order to figure out what exactly um, we can get a resonance going, what speed does the rotor have to go to make uh, everything coincide, the full charging of this without going any further, dumping it into the cap, 
but while it's dumping it in a cat, the switch needs to catch it at its peak again because it's going to do this. It's going to have this wave and she's just going to vibrate. Probably pretty long time in between pulsing this if you want to get a rotor going real fast. This is going to have to be, uh, it's going to be vibrating. It's going to be oscillating. So you're going to have to catch it when that capacitor is at full charge. When to close this to short across the motor. So there's going to be like a resonant uh, <coughs> frequency of how, what speed the motor is going at to activate the read switch. And how long it takes to charge this. How much we get into the cap and how much that affects these coils. We'll see. A couple more videos. Uh, I've just been trying to, uh, still unpacking stuff here and there and trying to straighten out stuff around the house because I just moved a little while back and start a new job. So I'm trying to put a little time into these things here, but things are time. Things take time away from me. They steal it. Um, but I should be back on to doing this uh, pretty more solid soon. Um, one thing I did notice, uh, I was measuring voltage here, it was 12.75, and I started up the motor, I gave it a spin, brought in the reed, you know, it's not hooked up right now, you just hear the reed going, and I went to measure the voltage, and it was still 12.75, so it's using very, very little current in order to drive the motor of what it's doing of what we've seen in the video so far um, but one of the surprising things is after a little bit it went up 12.76 um, my read switch she's going bad uh, you can see it's all dark in there uh, that's a test what I need to do is uh, get the proper cap in here that produces the least amount of damage to the read and then I'll set it up and we'll see if it does bring that battery up um, all this oscillating that's still going on in the circuit, it, you know, the circuit's not real life circuit, it's a simulation of probably some kind of perfect world, but she's still, she's still oscillating after you release the switch. Close the switch, we have current running, we release it. So it's going to oscillate, so when do we close the switch again to provide full cap power across there? So it's going to have to be an electronic thing that detects when this reaches peak of whatever value that is. Maybe you use some kind of a voltage regulator to determine or uh, a certain voltage for it to latch this switch at in order to make this a solid state device. But anyway, just want to show I'm working on it. Um, I got a lot of ideas in my head on how to change this, but uh, I'm just trying to figure, mess around with different aspects of the original circuit to get it grounded deep into my mind. And hopefully we'll get some answers out of it soon. Alright, thanks.